In this lecture, we'll be studying redox reactions. Redox reactions are reactions in which oxidation and reduction are happening at the same time. The word redox is basically composed of two words. One is reduction and the other is oxidation. Now, before moving on, we first need to describe what reduction and oxidation stand for. Now, when, when we talk about reduction, reduction has several different uh, means one is that it refers to a substance gaining an electron so if there is something which is gaining electrons we say that that substance has reduced so a gain of electrons is called reduction similarly a gain of hydrogen atoms is also gain of hydrogen is also considered as reduction Another definition of reduction is a loss of oxygen. So whenever something is losing oxygen, that's that will be classified as reduction as well. And finally, there's one uh, when one very particular definition which is called there's a decrease in oxidation state. We'll come back to what that means later on, but this is also part of the definition. So there are four different types of definition for reduction. Similarly, you have uh, four different types of definitions for oxidation, but I will sum it up that oxidation is exactly the opposite of above. It is the reverse of reduction. So when we say something is getting oxidized, that would mean it's losing electrons or it's losing hydrogen or it's gaining oxygen or the oxidation state is increasing. So the opposite of all these four definitions, that would, that would constitute oxidation. Remember one thing, whenever you have a redox reaction, redox reactions have oxidation reduction happening at the same time. It's impossible that only reduction is happening and there's no oxidation taking place. I'll give you some examples and describe. We, we, we're going to look into what, how each of these terms applies to reduction and oxidation. One very simple example is carbon is gaining oxygen, reacting with it. This is called a combustion reaction, and it is producing carbon dioxide. Now, <clears throat> now in this reaction, you have carbon. It had no oxygen initially, but later on two oxygens got added. So a gain of oxygen would be called oxidation. So carbon is getting oxidized. So this is called oxidation. Similarly, I'll have another reaction. For example, you have, uh, you have nitrogen reacting with hydrogen and it's producing NH3 and there'll be two of these let's balance this so this is an equation if you look at this equation carefully nitrogen had no hydrogen hydrogen atoms over here and nitrogen has three hydrogen atoms over here so nitrogen has gone from having no hydrogen atoms to gaining hydrogen atoms so a gain of hydrogen atoms was considered gain of hydrogen is basically considered reduction so nitrogen got reduced so this is also reduction so this is an example of reduction. Then uh, let's see how, how we can explain reduction oxidation in terms of electrons lost and electrons gained. For example, you, you might have heard about the displacement reactions. You have uh, magnesium and it's reacting with, let's say, it's, <clears throat> it's reacting with copper sulfate. Since magnesium is a more reactive element, it's going to displace copper sulfate and you're going to get MgSO4 and you're going to get copper metal. And if you look at this reaction carefully, there are two, two things happening. Magnesium is going, if you look at this magnesium, magnesium was originally a metal and it went on and lost, it became an ion. MgSO4, in MgSO4, Mg is an ion. So it's Mg plus two. So basically it lost two electrons. If you look at this, Mg has gone from being Mg to Mg plus two. So it's obviously losing two electrons whenever positive ions are formed, electrons are lost. And if you go by the definition, 
this would be called loss of electrons is called oxidation so we can say that mg got oxidized similarly on the other hand if you look at copper over here this was copper ion it was cu plus 2 so you had cu plus 2 and over here you have copper metal which is only cu the only way you can go from cu plus 2 to cu is when cu plus 2 gains two electrons so it obviously gained two electrons and this gain of electrons would be called reduction a few other examples we can uh, let's examine another equation uh, you probably uh, heard about this equation when we were studying extraction of iron the equation was you had Fe2O3 and it was reacting with carbon monoxide and it was producing carbon dioxide and it was giving us giving us iron as a product as well so if you look at this equation they and we need to first balance this equation uh, there would be three and this uh, probably would be this probably would be three as well I think oxygens are balanced the three into two six oxygens over here the three and three oxygens over here so there will be two ions over here this is a balanced equation now if you carefully look at this equation you can clearly see that iron is the one which is which has lost oxygen so when you when something loses oxygen that is called reduction so this would be reduction and if you look at carbon over here carbon over here is gaining oxygen it had only one oxygen over here now it has two oxygens so this would be called this would be called oxidation because it has gained oxygens. Similarly, there could be some more. Uh, we can uh, we can work with a few more examples. We can talk about uh, let's talk about let's talk about copper oxide. Copper oxide, if it's heated with hydrogen, it's going to become. There's going to be H two O as a product. Product going to be formed, and you'll get copper. If you look at this equation again, copper oxide is again going from it had one oxygen, now it has no oxygen. So this is a reduction. It has lost its oxygen. On the other hand, hydrogen had no oxygen and it now has an oxygen. So it's obviously getting oxidized. So over here, hydrogen has this is what this would be called oxidation. So here are a few examples. I hope all the definitions that apply to reduction and oxidation are clear to you. We are now, uh, and this is a class of reactions, and you probably must be able to identify which substances are getting reduced and which ones are getting oxidized. The whole scenario would become much more complicated. We've only dealt with very few simple equations so far. Now, the scenario is a lot more complicated when we deal with uh, very complicated equations and to to deal with complicated equations uh, it won't be as simple as this i mean there would be i will give you an example of a complicated equation later on but uh, we cannot really just deal with counting hydrogen atoms being lost and hydrogen atoms being gained so there's a there's a method a technique developed which uh, figures out oxidation and reduction so you don't really have to do all the counting it's a mathematical technique a slightly uh, innovative solution to finding out which which substances are getting oxidized and which substances are getting reduced the technique is called uh, you'll only be dealing with oxidation states you would you would be calculating oxidation states when you're dealing with this technique and oxidation states are hypothetical charges which uh, on on each element and based on those hypothetical charges we're going to figure out whether that substance is getting oxidized or it's getting reduced if there's an increase in oxidation state that would mean it is getting oxidized if it if there's a decrease in oxidation state that would mean it's getting reduced 
No, I'm I'm calling this hypothetical charges because it's not always true. I mean, most covalent compounds do not have charge. They do not have ions. So we can't really say that these charges are real. In ionic compounds, these charges are real. For example, in NaCl, for example, let's, uh, let's say sodium, there's sodium metal and it's forming a sodium ion. Now over here, sodium had a charge of zero. Over here, it has a charge of plus one. Its charge has increased. So this would be technically in terms of oxidation state. If there's an increase in oxidation state, it would be called oxidation. On the other hand, if for example, there's a substance copper plus two ion, which has, which was converted into copper, this process would be called reduction because the oxidation state or the hypothetical charge or the actual charge in this case has gone from plus two to zero. So this would be called reduction. But uh, for more complicated compounds, for example, if I have NCl3, I have no idea how to calculate the oxidation state or the hypothetical charges of nitrogen and chlorine because this entire molecule is a covalently bonded molecule and it won't have any charges. There are no ions present. So we need a system for calculating those charges. And uh, before moving on and developing that system where we can basically find out what oxidation states are for any element. For example, we don't know what the oxidation state on nitrogen over here is. We don't know what the oxidation state on chlorine over here is. So to develop a system, we first need to uh, figure out what is meant by the term electronegativity. I'm going in a lot of detail over here to explain oxidation states uh, completely to you. A lot of this is probably not required from this point onwards. You don't really need to understand what electronegativity is and how that is linked with oxidation states but uh, even without this you can do a lot of calculation but let's uh, you can forward the video on to more important points 